Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're going to look at one type of workplace that has a startling rate of infection across the US with one location having over half of the cases of that entire state being the largest hotspot in the entire US. And we're talking about those meat packing plants, which let's be honest, we should just call slaughterhouses, no point in sugarcoating it. You can't just put the word plant next to it and make it okay, that does not work. But don't worry, in order to make watching this subject matter somewhat bearable, we're not even gonna show any graphic footage of slaughterhouses, we're just gonna talk about the topic. So we're gonna investigate this, in particular the question, is it just worker to worker transmission that is happening here? Or is there something else at play? Could it be that there is a particular farm animal that is infected? We're gonna look at the research on the potential of this. Could it happen? What animals are susceptible? A lot of research, <laughs> let's go. And yes, my beard is gone. If this is traumatizing for you, then and please go back to my most recent video and watch it so that your brain can wrap itself around it. You've probably seen some of the headlines about how all of these meat processing plants across the US are shutting down and how this is probably going to lead a meat shortage, which has of course led a lot of vegans to be like, it's all going according to plan. Anyway, let's look at the breadth of this issue. We have that South Dakota Smithfield pork plant that had a ton of cases, over half of South Dakota's cases. Right now, they're at about 900, which is about 25% of all of the workers that worked there. And it's probably spreading to their families, which is horrible, but that makes it the single largest coronavirus hotspot within the US, surpassing the Cook County Jail and the USS Theodore Roosevelt, which is actually in Guam. There's also Louisa County in Iowa, which has a larger per capita infection rate in the state of New York. And that's because of a Tyson slaughterhouse outbreak. You know, there's a Wisconsin slaughterhouse outbreak, but they've concealed the numbers. There was also a JBS slaughterhouse in Greeley, Colorado, and we have four deaths from that. They claim about 100 cases, but let's be honest, if you have four deaths already, you have more than 100 cases. And there are a ton of other meat plants that are being closed in other states. I could go on and on and on, but it's being described as a national phenomenon. However, it also extends to other countries. For example, Canada, they have a Cargill slaughterhouse with at least 350 cases, which is pretty large. You get the point, now let's do some thinking. And the question to me here is, why is it such an outbreak at these slaughterhouses and not as much of an outbreak at other essential manufacturing or production plants? How come we're not seeing this at vegetable packing plants? They're probably not as big, but it just seems like there has to be some other type of elbow to elbow, way too close proximity production going on that is beyond slaughterhouses that should also have outbreaks like this. So we have some things to think about. And we have a few options here and none of them are good. We have option A, which is just worker to worker transmission mission, which is just such a human rights violation of putting profit over human health that we're getting such a high rate of infection. There's option B that there is in fact some type of farm animal that got infected somehow throughout the supply chain and they're making it to these slaughterhouses where they are then infecting the people who are working there. Or option C, a combination of both. And we know that these slaughterhouses are horrible places to work for people. Obviously they're the worst place in the world for animals, but there's a lot of sort of human rights violations going on. And especially there's some major catastrophic corporate decisions going on here. Clearly these large corporations have chosen to continue production and to continue profiting at the expense of their largely immigrant workforce. For example, the blunder by Smithfield in that large South Dakota outbreak, after finding out that they had cases, instead of really just getting masks to their workers, they ended up ended up giving them beard nets, which is kind of like trying to sail with a fishing net on your mast. It's not gonna work. Now they had a lot of incentives to keep coming into work as well as how that shutdown wasn't really a shutdown at all. Their parking lot was still full. They were running at 60% capacity not a shutdown. And there's been other slaughterhouses with ridiculous missteps as well. For example, one that told workers after they tested positive for COVID-19, after just a few days, if they felt better, they should come back into work. And there were other plants that were hiding the fact that certain employees tested positive from the other employees. So it's very possible that psychopathic profiteering alone was responsible for these outbreaks. But there's still some major warning signs that this could have been not just worker to worker spread alone, it could have been an infected animal. It's worth investigating at the very least. Okay, starting off, we know that this virus infects a range from obviously humans to bats and cats as well, which is unfortunate as well as 
probably the pangolin. So we have a big spectrum of mammals here that are pretty far away on the evolutionary tree when you consider it all. Anatomically, that is a huge range of animals. So do we really believe that none of the animals that we farm could be susceptible at all? We know that previous coronaviruses have spread through farm animals. And you may have seen that coronavirus vaccine that sparked some fake news, which is actually for a different strain of the virus in cattle. And from a livestock focused journal, they said, quote, coronaviruses are common among farm animals. And obviously they're talking about different strains in general that don't normally attack humans, but Clearly, coronaviruses can attack animals. I mean, National Hog Farmer actually described the term coronavirus as familiar to the industry. And this is where we have to acknowledge the patterns that are emerging with what types of slaughterhouses are having the outbreaks. For example, that Smithfield pork plant was killing pigs. That Tyson plant in Iowa, which you would think would be Tyson chicken because they're known for chicken, was actually a pork plant as well. And there are plenty of other pork ones that have closed in other states like Missouri and Wisconsin. And a lot of them are also beef plants. So it looks like we're about 60 to 70 percent pigs, 25 to 30 percent cows. And then we're only around maybe five to 10 percent poultry. We'd have to do an official count. But that's really low considering that the main meat in terms of volume that is consumed is chicken. Twice as much chicken is consumed as pig and three times as much chicken is consumed as cow. And we have to acknowledge the extremely close relationship between human and pig anatomy. We have people who are walking around with pig heart valves in their body and the lung anatomy is also quite similar. And there are viruses like swine flu that go directly from pigs to us. And of course, pigs also get their own coronaviruses as well. And in the past, we have had other coronaviruses that came from pigs that were shown to be able to attack human tissues. So the alarms have been sounded on this cross species infection. And so there is danger of that happening, but also of course it happening the other way around in the future future, possibly even with other strains of coronavirus. And that's what scientists were worried about. And so they've actually been looking at the receptors that the coronavirus attaches to in various animals, that is the ACE2 receptors, and asking whether or not this particular coronavirus can attack them. And from one study back in February, they found that yes, pig ACE2 receptors can be latched onto by the virus. And another much more recent study looked at 250 different animals and their ACE2 receptors. And it was pretty concerning. They found that the receptors were compatible with the virus in not just sheep and goats, but also pigs and cows, but not birds. This means it's probably not gonna spread through chickens, which makes perfect sense with our distribution of slaughterhouses. Anyway, they do wanna be careful and they conclude that quote, these are still preliminary results predicted by sequence analysis, which cannot accurately reflect the infection in the animals. And remember, this coronavirus is now called SARS coronavirus 2. This is SARS 2. We had SARS 1, and maybe there's some similarity in what that virus could infect. And so one study actually tried to infect chickens and pigs with the virus, and they didn't do that many of them, but the result was that no, it didn't infect chickens. And while they weren't able to get symptoms and infection directly out of pigs, they did find that there were antibodies, which means that the pigs registered the SARS as a foreign virus and they tried to fight it. They also concluded that they're not a likely carrier of SARS, but they only looked at a handful of pigs. And again, these farms usually have around a thousand or more. And then here's another studies on SARS-1 that is very concerning. It was more of a cross section of random sampling of pigs and get this, they say that SARS was isolated from a pig during a survey for possible routes of viral transmission after the SARS epidemic. And that with sequencing and epidemiological analysis, they found that the pig was infected by SARS coronavirus of human origin. Yeah, that is that is really concerning, but actually we have a newer study that just came out on SARS-2, the actual coronavirus we're concerned about, and they inoculated really just five pigs, but they found that coronavirus did not infect them. So they said, no, these are not gonna be carriers of the virus. They did find that cats could be infected as we already know. So keep with what those cats like and isolate them away from other living beings. But they think it's unlikely that pigs will spread this virus and we could get overconfident and write it off there. However, I have a few alarm bells here. And the first one is that this was only five pigs and they were only 40 days old. The 40 days part is a concern because these are animals that are generally slaughtered around 
six months, which is still really young for them as a species, but they've gone through a lot by then. Their immune system will be compromised. And think about infecting a human at the equivalent age of a 40-day-old pig. These children are hardly getting the virus at all, so it's possible that it would just go unnoticed in those pigs when older pigs could be infected more easily. Secondly, these were probably lab pigs. They were not confined in horrible, dirty conditions. As far as I would guess, maybe they were, but that would give them extra immunity. And the fact that it was only five pigs is also an issue because looking to that Smithfield plant, they are four to five percent of all of the pork production in the U.S. We're talking 17,000 pigs slaughtered a day there, potentially. The Tyson one in Iowa did 10,000 in one day. So even if we're at a small one percent infection rate, we're still talking about over a hundred pigs spreading infected materials throughout these slaughterhouses throughout a day. But moving beyond that study, there's another sort of concern I have. I'm throwing out a lot of concerns and sort of hypotheses out there because I want to nip this in the butt. And that is the potential for this going undetected in pigs because in pigs, coronaviruses are generally intestinal. And this is important because while we are having lung issues as humans and some digestive issues, those ACE2 receptors that line our lungs also align the intestines of both us and pigs and cattle. So farmers might be more alert to an increase in respiratory symptoms, but be missing a digestive coronavirus disease in their farmed pigs. And this is where we have a potential means of transmission in those slaughterhouses because, well, they could just be getting it from a respiratory infection of the animals that are being slaughtered. It is possibly more lethal if we have this fecal matter that has dried and become aerosolized. So you have this dust just everywhere in the slaughterhouse that people can breathe in constantly, which would be super effective at infecting people. And in case that sounds a bit far-fetched, as this study mentions, pig workers exposed to organic dust, AKA poop dust from pigs, may be susceptible to certain viruses. And from this Reuters article, the bird flu, another virus, also travels on fecal dust. Anyway, I hope I'm proven wrong on all of this, but I would really like to see an independent investigation going in, testing these slaughterhouses, testing the animals, testing the supply chain, and just making sure that this isn't the case because there are too many alarm bells here. And even the industry is saying that we're not gonna have an answer on this based on tests until the end of April, which is coming up very soon. Maybe you already know watching this, uh, but we don't know yet. In conclusion, it's clear that there are extremely inhumane conditions in these slaughterhouses for obviously animals, but also people. It could be worker-to-worker -worker transmission just happening because of extreme corporate negligence and just horribly tight conditions. But based off all the factors here, we have to ask if there is more going on just to do our due diligence. Could it be that either pigs or cows are infected somewhere in the supply chain and that it is spreading in these slaughterhouses? Right now we have a little bit of mixed signals going on in the research, but we have the anatomy of both pigs and cows that is capable of harboring this virus based off the receptors. We also have that crazy disparity in the types of slaughterhouses that are being infected and what animals that they are slaughtering. I just can't write this off because of a study on five pigs that were super young. And obviously going vegan would prevent these slaughterhouse cases too. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down below about this theory. And also the next video I'm gonna try to do one that's not coronavirus related. So let me know what you wanna see a video on. All right, feel free to like and subscribe and uh, we'll see what happens. I'll see you in the next one too. Thanks for watching.